water, earth. That one, yeah, we're talking about that one today. We've seen variants of this solid classical element in a lot of games, but I'm here trying to make my own stem-based creature collector called the Stemma Region. And when it comes to type matchups and collecting creatures, well, Pokemon kind of dominates that market. But Pokemon treats the earth element differently. Instead of having just one type, it's divided into two, rock and ground. I'll share some of my notes as to why they might have made that distinction all the way from their very beginnings, before going over how I wanted to implement this element a little differently with the single geotype that I mentioned in my fossil video. If you stick around, I'll even show you a three-stage mono geotype line from the Stemma region. So without further ado, let's look into why rock and ground type are separate. Pokemon isn't the only franchise to make a distinction in the earthen element. Okay, I, I could only think of Bionicles, but they both separate the hard, sturdy rock from the softer soil or dusty sand around it. I mean, if you clump up some sand hard enough, you could probably end up with a rock. That's foreshadowing. I guess another distinction would be rocks versus minerals, but in that case, rocks are made out of minerals, just multiple minerals put together makes a rock, and a mineral is a specific chemical crystal structure. But rock and ground types were implemented in Pokemon as separate types from the very beginning, all the way back when there was only 15 types. I mean, that's still a lot of types. So there must be a deliberate reason why, right? Well, in Generation 1, the only rock types that weren't the fossils were all rock and ground type. There are mono ground types, but no mono rock types. Maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it's just because rock type only has two moves, but hold up, what's the first gym you have to get through in generation 1? Pewter City, a rock type gym, guarded by gym leader Rock, I mean Brock. Brock doesn't even use rock type moves in the first gen. And despite the higher leveled mons he's using, the rock and ground dual typing makes more weaknesses than either of the types would have had alone. So let's take a look at the type matchups of rock and ground type, which have basically stayed the same over the years. Rock and ground are both weak to grass and water, so that rock ground type onyx is super dead to a water gun. But while the types don't cover each other defensively, they do so offensively. Ice beats ground, but rock beats ice. Bug resists ground, but rock beats bug. Conversely, steel beats rock, but ground beats steel. But the biggest prize is in the immunities. While electric cannot touch ground, ground cannot touch flying type. While rock doesn't really have any immunities, it can hit flying types super effectively, scratching that itch that ground couldn't reach. These immunities are what makes this dynamic so interesting and necessitates the difference between these two types. Ground types have moves that are strong and accurate, hitting a lot of types for super effective damage, but gift them on a flying type, a specific item, or even levitate as an ability, and you could avoid the ground move entirely. Rock type is more of a glass cannon, which hits a lot of types quite well, but they also get beat by a lot of types. So alright, if they are this different from each other in gameplay mechanics, how am I just going to have one earth element? Mind you, in most other games, the earth element is just represented by one type. But most other games also don't include that immunity between the earth element versus the air element. Whenever I decided to go ahead and try to make my region a separate independent project from Pokemon, I needed to make my project be different from the biggest company in the market. Thus, one of the steps I took was to combine the rock and ground types into something that I'm currently calling the geotype. I kept the symbol that I use for ground, by the way. Again, I'm not suggesting that Pokemon should do this. This is all for my own project. So how did I deal with the immunity discrepancies? Let me start with flying type, where it's now weak to geotype, like throwing a rock at a bird. However, flying type mods are now immune to all ground-based moves. What is a ground-based move, you ask? Well, even in Pokemon, moves just don't have types, but some of them also have special categories. 
I'm not talking about physical versus special attacks, but rather the special attributes given to some moves. A big example of this are sound-based moves. A lot of people mention how sound should be a type, but sound is currently dealt as a category where they all bypass substitute and can't affect bonds with the soundproof ability. Here's a more related example. Powder moves. These moves are usually very powerful status moves, but they can be blocked with an item, and here's the important part, they don't affect grass types. Some of these types have special attributes in addition to their type matchups, like fire types can't be burned, electric types can't be paralyzed, and grass types are immune to powder moves. All this is to say that a lot of strong geotype moves in my project would be ground-based leaving flying or as I call them arrow types to be safe from them. Also all the mons that can levitate would be safe from those moves. There would also be few other moves of different types that are ground based where arrow and levitating mons would be immune to them. Alright that's flying covered, what about electric type? Would Geo be immune to it? Electric is a pretty powerful type with one weakness so I think it's apt to give Geo type an immunity to electric, ideally. I'd like to make it that Geo is only immune to electric when they are on the ground, but I don't really have any flying Geo types like Geo Arrow type mons or any Geo mons that could levitate. Uh, let me know if this electric immunity thing only happening on the ground is too complicated or not. Because here's the thing, the reason why ground is immune to electric type moves in the first place, because grounding and electricity is a reference point where electric currents are led to literally into the ground beneath the building. It's important to ground electrical systems or else that system could still carry a voltage that could harm anyone who touches the system leading to some very serious accidents. So ideally geotype is only immune to electric type when it's on the ground but again let me know if that's too complicated. The last major discrepancy between the types is steel type, which I still plan on including. Currently I have steel type to be super effective against Geo, like how a steel shovel can pierce the ground. But here's a hot take, I want the steel to resist this Geo type, well because out of all materials, steel can actually withstand earthquakes relatively well. Originally steel type is weak to ground type because the ground could warp the steel and earthquakes could shake down buildings but buildings and places with frequent earthquakes are reinforced with steel because metal is ductile aka flexible and would bend rather than snap off and break. So it felt more of a resistance. So yeah. Here's my rough draft of the type matchups with the geotype. Anything not listed here just means that it's neutral. Alright, so quite a few generations of Pokemon have had this three stage rock archetype from Geodude to the most recent Nockley line, which you find near the first half of the game. Like not the very beginning, but right after that as the creatures start to get slowly wackier as you get accustomed to this funny world. Anyways, what bigger three stage rock topic is there for my stem based region other than the rock cycle? It's a bit elementary yes, but it's near the beginning of the game and I hope people can see these rock monsters and recognize what they're going for because we're starting with Igneo, an igneous stone, just a pure geotype. Igneous rocks are the ones that are formed through cooled magma or lava. Depending on how quickly they are cooled, there could be a lot of holes as gases are trying to seep out of it as it cools. Igneon here is also volcano shaped because even if I did want to add a fire type, it would lose it in the next stages anyway so I kept it as a rock type, represented in lava with a shiny gem instead. Igneon evolves into Seti Slab, a sedimentary rock. These rocks are formed with layers and layers of grounded up sediment piling on top of each other, like sandstone or limestone, and that's why Seti Slab is flat. Originally Seti Slab was supposed to be rock and ground type, but in my region since they're both one type, this is still mono geotype. And finally Seti Slab can turn into Meta Mulder, a metamorphic rock which is a rock that is subjected to high pressure and or temperature that the chemical bonds of the rock have changed significantly. Thus the bands of Seti Slab are now warped, there was some pressure and heat applied to it, 
Now, in our world, it is possible for an igneous rock to jump straight into metamorphic, like metamorphic rocks don't always have to come from sedimentary ones. Heck, any rock can also be molten back down into lava and be remade as an igneous rock, and any rock can be ground up in sediment and then crushed into a sedimentary rock. This line is more based on the order of how we're usually taught about these rocks, and I preferred having this as a three-stage line instead of a single stage with interchangeable multiple forms because I actually have another mon that does that, but that's a story for another day. Again, this video is not about how Pokemon should remove the ground type. No, it's just about how I wanted to treat the earth element to make my project a little more unique. That's not the only type change of course, and I'll be making more videos on them soon. I'm still figuring things out, so a lot of these type matches might change once I make up a prototype. But that's not being worked on anytime soon. I got some real life stuff going on, but I'm planning on working on it in a few months. But yeah. So I want to thank my patrons from Patreon for directly supporting my content. The higher tiers have access to behind the scenes work in progress sketches and also notes about past versions of my designs. If you see my Pika clone video, I kind of condense all that information in one image which I show to the highest tier in my Patreon. But otherwise, you can subscribe and share this video for free. I have a playlist of videos going over my stemmer region here. And yeah, I guess that'll be it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.